All right, welcome to another edition of AK Option Trader. What a week we've been having. I'm tired of saying it, but uh, you've seen it. It has been crazy, crazy. First chart we got here is the VIX, the VIX of all the volatility in indicator. As you can see, this thing has been just through the roof. Um, it has been crazy. We're at all time highs, uh, blasting out. But there's something I want to show you here as I zoom in on it a little bit. If you look at the, uh, the wicks on these things, notice there's a lot of top wicks uh, a lot of wicks up high uh, i think seven out of the last eight days or something like that every time it's tried to blast out of there up, up at an all-time high it pulls right back down uh, beneath the bones band the top bones are band. so that being said that uh what does that tell you well it tells you that every time we try to push the all-time highs and get a capitulation we're not doing it we're coming back in so something to watch for when we have these huge blasts up. Especially if we're outside the Bollinger Band. You notice the big candles inside the Bollinger Bands seem to be doing all right and being able to hold that run. When we blow outside that top one, though, uh, we just can't seem to ma maintain it. Uh, and the indicators on there are still showing up. So uh, something to watch and uh, just something to think about. It's a tool I use uh, almost every day. Look at that uh, VIX intraday, over the week, over the month, over whatever. Uh, you're going to see a lot of things on it here. So, uh, all right, time to look at some of our indices and uh, see where we're at here. Give us a second to load up. All right, so we're going to start with the Dow. Looking at the Dow, Dow's uh, done something pretty significant this week. Dow has broke and closed beneath for the first time in, I don't know how many times since that day there, first time the Dow has closed beneath this 84.50 line. And it's the first time that it's also closed beneath that uptrend line of this triangle. Uh, that is a bearish thing, people. Um, for it to do that, indicators down, histos turning around. The uh, next stop is down here at the bottom. So um, nothing to stop it, nothing to hold it on. Uh, if it closes back and gets back above that support line, it could be a different signal. But right now, right now, we're looking at it's right beneath there, and we could be heading down a little bit lower. Uh, on this. Um, so something to keep an eye on. Uh, things are changing. Tides are turning. So here we got the S&P. This is two year, but uh, we're going to zoom in on it a little bit. And let's look at this. This one you could have moved the uh, the uptrend line a little bit. I could drag it down and hit the, hit the bottom of that uh, wick on the red candle there on the last day on the Friday. Uh, but I'm not going to do that because this one here is pretty good. You get three hits on it. Uh, I like it. It's strong. You can see the trend line up here. The steep one over there that we had uh, going up. That one got broke. Now we're down beneath and into another set of triangle trend lines. And we're closed beneath significant support. Uh, quite a ways beneath significant support. Hit that trend line, climbed, closed on it right there. So we're in an, uh, an area where we could bounce a little bit. I don't think that's going to happen. I actually think we're going to close beneath that. Uh, indicators are down. Um, I'm thinking we're going to go keep going back down. Um, so something to watch for. That's looking embarrassed to me too. So. Anyway, there's back at the two year. You can see we're hitting the fibs, and we we have the potentiality to get down to. As we got the Nasdaq right here, Nasdaq, my favorite. Uh, very, very, very bearish. Probably of all three indices, this is the most bearish to me. Um, it broke the zero percent line. It is down there, people. It smashed that uptrend line, smashed support, closed beneath it. Uh, there's nothing holding this bad boy right now. Nothing, nothing, nothing. So. Um, Still got a little bit of room above the Bollinger, bottom Bollinger Band there for it to slide down that slippery slope. Um, this could get ugly and this could get ugly real quick. So this is uh, this is something to watch for. Um, any Qs, any NASDAQ stocks you're playing are going to be affected by this. Yeah, unless we have a significant rally on Monday. Uh, if something weird happens over the weekend. You never know. You never know. Maybe they'll put $10 trillion equity in the market and really help us out. Wouldn't that be lovely? Uh, we can go to the, uh, what is it, the Amero, the Amero sooner than later. All right, so <clears throat> we'll look at some of our stocks that we have going on here. This is one of our old favorite, the JP Morgan, JPM is the ticker symbol in the megaphone pattern. Um, what we're looking at here is this last couple weeks, last couple months, I should say, on the stock here. You can see how it went up, hit down, we expected it to come back down. It kind of played around in the middle, which it has been doing quite a bit lately. It has hit and broken through the 50% support line, broken through an uptrend line. Um, I think it's ready to fall. That's a pretty strong uptrend line. It's going to hit the next fib line, and then it's going to keep on going down. It might stall out there a little bit, but as you can see in the past, it really, really hasn't uh, cared much about that line. So 
we're going to see if it uh, blows through there. If it breaks through there, we're going to go all the way back down with this bad boy. So it's something to watch for here. The next one's another old favorite of ours is the Sina. I'm going to zoom in here. It's uh, hit that uh, uh, neckline of the head and shoulders, bounced back up, closed up above it. But it's still got a bearish tone to it. Um, I, I'm thinking it's going to break back down there and break that line again and drop way back down again. So it's going to be a definitely a playable um, a playable one and uh, one I'd like to see get in. If I was going to play it, I'd play December. Um, the November options are just too much. I think the spread's too much. It's like a double head and shoulders here. So um, I'd be looking for this thing to break down again and get down to that red support line right in there, right in that level somewhere. And uh, that's the way I'm going to be playing it. So another down play. Next one coming up is Cisco CSCO. This is one I used to play a lot. Um, this one, you know, I, I like it because it's right on that bottom of the 0% retracement on the fib. Um, will it bounce or will it fall? This one falls the fibs beautifully too. So I'm thinking it might bounce actually. I know it's a NASDAQ. I know it would be going against everything I just said. But it's just something to keep an eye on. If it breaks and stays beneath there, it closes beneath it. If it stays beneath there, hold on for a free fall. Uh, if not, I mean, if we get a bounce, we get a bounce. So just something to watch. I just find it interesting because it follows those fibs so tightly. Last one, uh, ticker symbol G-I-L-D, Gilead Sciences. This one is just a, a real pretty uh, pattern going up here. It rebounded off the bottom, comes back up, hits a 50%, my favorite fib, 50%, and starting to turn down. Uh, the histo's turning down. Uh, the indicators are turning down. The stock RSI is up. It's turning down. I can see the sucker falling right back down there to the 28% uh, fib right there near the bottom. Um, pretty good move, and if it breaks that, we could go all the way back down to the bottom one there. So it's definitely playable. Anyway, so as you can see, I'm still short. Uh, keep your day trade short. Uh, I'm not staying in over the long term. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, I hope you have a great trade.